Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. <laughs> if you're in the other stream. Uh, yeah, I forgot how to actually connect my camera. It's been a month. Who knew? I have had a problem recently. Believe it or not, I have hundreds and hundreds of gel prints. Honestly, my thing is so heavy, I can't possibly lift it. But I have been doing a lot of like art journaling and needing prints lately for either pieces on canvas or just pieces in my art journal. And I got to tell you, even with all the different um, things that I have, it's been a struggle to find something that works sometimes. And so I like I find myself saving pieces. This is one that I just had to create the other day because I needed like some sort of grungy texture just to add because I was collaging this tree for a piece and before working and putting it onto canvas. And I've just kind of really been frustrated with the whole process. So I thought, you know what? I really need to create some more prints because I love to use them and under layers and things like that. Um, hey, Mary, thanks for joining. And everybody else, sorry about the hiccup with the other <laughs> with the other stream. You can see that I use uh, gel prints in lots of different ways when I create art. It's not just for cards. It's also for a lot of just uh, backgrounds, you know, on canvases, as well as um, coasters, you know, when I make coasters. And sometimes I don't just use like an entire print, which then I can use a piece of paper, but sometimes I actually collage things. And when I do that, I find that I really kind of need a lot of different options. Hey, I'm a girl. I need some options. Hey, Jennifer, welcome. And if you're just kind of, uh, I don't know, lurking, I invite you to come chat because we're going to have a lot of fun. And if you have a, if you have a gel plate and you have not gotten that crafty thing going lately, or you've been in a slump or something and you just need a little inspiration, join me. We're going to have fun. We're going to create lots of things that we can use. This is going to be just inviting the muse that we have and just creating something amazing that we can use. You can see I use a lot of gel prints just in various ways um, in, in my pieces, in my art journal. This is like one of the first pages I made, and it's one of my favorite prints that I used. And I just created flowers out of it. There's so many different things you can make. You know, um, and I've just really been having a lot of fun. This is a piece that I'm working on right now. And I really love having like grungy little texture pieces. And a lot of times the prints that I use, they're not necessarily like, um, I have like a bunch right behind me, like whole prints like this. What I'm really after is creating some things that are a little more monochromatic. And here's like my little kind of like, if some people call it fodder, I just call them like little bits and bobs. And, you know, and I like to sometimes just tear something from it. And even though it may look like nothing, I can use this on a page and it gives me that foundation, that interest uh, to, the, you know, to the back of a piece. I love it when I get pieces like this and you can see there's a leaf in here. Now this stuck to something. So I had to unfortunately lift it off, but that's the nice thing about using deli papers and other, other papers too, is you can very easily collage that all back together. So I never freak out about stuff like that, but I thought that we would use other things like here's a napkin layer. And I thought that we would use like tissue papers and other stuff today. So, oh, oops. I kind of lost y'all there. That was a little frightening. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start. Now, if you were following me a month ago, and I know it's been a while since we've been live, but I kind of just had life going on. Um, Michael ended up getting COVID, and so I was kind of doing everything around the house, plus taking care of him for a couple weeks. It's really down for the count, and, uh, and plus working full time and all that, so... Uh, YouTube, unfortunately, just kind of took a little bit of a backseat. If you remember, I nicked my other plate. So in order for me to really do this, one side has a huge gouge in it. I can still use the other side and I can still use that plate. And I'm considering even cutting it and cutting it in pieces. Um, I haven't quite gotten that far yet. 
So I got myself a new nine by 12 and you can see, so if you've never used your gel plate before, your jelly plate, you can call it either way, you can see here is a brand spanking new one. And look at how pretty and clear it is, right? Compared to ones that get loved and used. You can see that they get stained. This got stained with alcohol inks um, one day. But over time, they just kind of get a little dingy. And, you know, I, I don't clean mine all the time. Um, I just leave, I just pay a lot of that stuff forward. And, um, I just thought it'd be kind of interesting for you to see what a brand new plate is. Now, since it's brand spanking new, it kind of needs to be seasoned. So the first couple pulls, I'm not really expecting a whole lot. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some quick, quick, good morning, Chris, <laughs> the next day, some quick prints. And so I'm taking some deli papers. I'm going to use deli paper today. I'm going to do some printing on tissue paper today, which is not a, a paper, a fiber that you've seen me use that frequently, but I found the more collage I do, the more I'm gravitating towards wanting something that's super, super transparent. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of everything. I even have some rice paper um, to use today and rice paper is a little bit different. It's a little bit finer. This is what you'll see a lot of, you know, um, a lot of Asian calligraphy done on rice paper. It's very, very fine. It has a soup. This one has a super smooth side and one that's got a little bit of tooth to it. So I may, I may do some pulls with that to do some collage um, with later. I got that, I learned that, um, well not learned, but I, I saw a video or two from Elizabeth St. Hilaire and I know she likes to, who has designed a lot of the stencils that I like. I have some of Karen Tamir stencils and some of Elizabeth's stencils in here, some others from Joggles and um, just grabbed a bunch of stencils that I loved. She does a lot of painting, underpaintings with doing a lot of collage with deli papers uh, done with rice, rice paper, so. Anybody crafting alongside me today? Jump into the chat for sure. If you can, if you have an extra hand, I should say. So let's go ahead and get going. We're just gonna start with the paper. I have been drawn to yellow lately. I don't know why, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this kind of deeper color. I find that the more and more I print, the more I, and just work, paint, do other things. I really need kind of like a variety um, in hues here. So I have um, gold ochre and I've got um, azo yellow medium here and azo yellow deep. I love having, I also have light, having the light, the medium and the deep because it gives me a lot of depth in things when I'm working on them. And I find that I gravitate towards the deep here. I'm not surprised because it feels a little bit more, I mean, it's still bright, but I don't know. I'm always, uh, uh, I always get uh, pulled towards um, like more muted colors. And I think the darker you go sometimes, it's just not quite as bright. Not like a lemon yellow, which is like bright, bright, bright. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just seasoning this, just getting some nice little color going. And I'll just take a piece of deli paper. So we have a nice yellow base here. So I'm gonna get the first pull from this plate. How exciting. How exciting. Let's just do a real quick pull. Real quick pull so that we leave some yellow behind, which is kind of cool. And let me just go ahead and take a stencil. And I know I've pulled most of it up, but let's just see what we can do here really quick. See if any of that will still come up. We'll just probably sink in color on color, but yeah, oh cool. Okay. I just wanted to leave a little bit of pattern behind here. So I got kind of that darker yellow going on and I grabbed my trusty fan that I have I'm always out this time of year. Um, this is just one that I got off Amazon. I use them um, when Michael and I, we play Yahtzee outside in the summertime and it is just hot here in North Carolina. Jump into the chat and tell me where you're all, or if you're you know, watching the replay, definitely let me know where you're from. I always love to know where everybody's from. And has it been hot, cold? Have you been having an unusual summer like us? It's just now starting to be like humid, humid here. I don't know about you, but uh, not the traditional summer. It was a little cool 
in June and actually an earlier in July, which was interesting. So it's kind of letting that dry a little. Doesn't, it feels a little tiny bit tacky. You can see I have lots of different plates down and that's because I plan on doing a lot of really quick pulls. Um, and if in case I do end up um, needing, finding myself layering and doing other things, I don't want to have to wait for something. So I like to use multiple, multiple plates. Got my little scrap paper here off to the side. I zoomed this camera way out. I hope everything is going the right direction for you all. Um, yeah, this is, and the, the, the reason that I love using this right here, Anne, is because it's cool, right? So it's not, there's no heat in any way, shape or form because you can't have, you can't heat these. That's, they, they will get destroyed. So never take like an embossing tool to it or anything like that because you will actually, Burn it. I don't know if it'll melt it. I've never tried, but I don't really feel like destroying one. So I just get one of these. It's really inexpensive off Amazon. It might even have it linked. I'm not sure in my supply list. Uh, I'll have to check afterward. But um, yeah, I have a couple of those that were like 13 bucks off Amazon. So I've got this really cute one here. It's got just a little bit of yellow, but you can't see it all that well. Got a little yellow here. Um, let's go ahead and add like a different color where these might blend a little together. I don't know, it's not that much yellow. So let's just take, I've got medium magenta and um, some quinacridone magenta. It's really dark. Let's let's maybe add a little bit of, oh, I'm like unsure of what I wanna do here. Cobalt teal, why not? Mint Hill, North Carolina. I'm not really sure where Mint Hill is. I need to venture out and explore the rest of North Carolina a little bit more. Turquoise green. We've only been here for five and a half hours. Rhode Island, love Rhode Island. My boss was just in Rhode Island for a couple, like five days or so. Love that. Ooh, Australia. Always wanted to go to Australia too. So, and then I think from here, since we added this, this is um, turquoise green. We're gonna add a little turquoise blue. So you can see how they're just a little different shades um, and just kind of see what those bring us. And I think with having the yellow, it may create a little green. We'll see, you never know. Um, and why not? We'll add a little magenta just for fun, right? Cause that's what it's all about. I have to tell you, I have been kind of like in a really, I was in a really weird art place for a while. And maybe some of you can relate. You'll have to let me know in the chat or the description if uh, you relate to any of this. Um, I just kind of like was really trying to find my style because I'm kind of evolving a little bit as an artist. Um, I used to make a lot of cards and I still make cards, but I don't, I find that I'm not really stamping a whole lot and I'm really loving what's going on here. I find that I'm not really stamping a whole lot anymore. And so I'm going to be purging a lot of my stuff because I'm just fine that I'm not using it. And I found myself gravitating towards a lot more really creative ways of using my supplies, which I'm really, really loving. Um, I think for this, I want to go ahead and use, uh, let's pull up, let's go ahead and pull up some, uh, some really cool little patterns here. So I'm just going to put that down and I'm going to take this yellow one that we just made. I was going to do tone on tone, but let's go ahead and uh, see what happens here. Um, and so I've just been kind of exploring and go, stepping into a new art practice, which has been amazing. I have been committed to just every single morning sitting down and doing something. Oh, I'm loving that. Okay. See, this is just like something fun and different. Um, the yellow is a little, a lot. Um, so I would need to build on that for me. Uh, with this, I think I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper and see if I can't pull some of this pattern up a little bit. Um, and so I've been working a lot in my art journal and painting canvases, working on creating deeper textures and things, uh, working with alcohol inks and just really doing a lot of creative things. Um, and without like 
stressing myself out from having to make content because I also work full time. And um, like I said, Michael was really sick for a while and nothing really there. So let's pull that off. So we've got this really cool pattern now behind. So this is great. So because I'm wanting to, and I know I'm kind of telling you a story and going back and forth from what's going on, but I just kind of want to um, just create something. So I may, I may jump back and forth. I hope that's okay. So if, if I forget to go back to something, just let me know. Um, I want to kind of keep some things tone on tone a little bit or not like get too crazy off base with stuff. So I may even just with this, I may just even pull this up in white so that I have kind of that, that interesting stuff there. But I think before I do that, I want to add a little bit of bits little bits and bobs here. So you might have seen a short that I kind of snipped today from a, a video that you've, you're have you probably familiar with from me. And I think black is gonna be our best bet here with these. Um, this is really one of those things that I love to do, just adding little bits and pieces um, to prints and then taking them in a big pull. I don't need to add a ton. I just wanna add a little bit here and there. It's just that little bit of interest because again, we're just kind of creating some collage materials and that right there is a little too perfect. So I'll just come in with my finger and just kind of tap that out. That works. And let's just kind of, I'm just kind of dispersing it, um, you know, so it feels a little more organic, uh, not so perfect. Gotta do it in odds. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'm liking that. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so since I have this, let's go ahead and just lay this down because this will be like an under layer for another print and this will just kind of start to dry. Just think of it like grunge or like when I'm in, every time I've like been to Europe, there's like all these like old buildings that are like so worn and so beautiful. And they have this interesting, interesting texture and uh, um, so that's kind of like what I think about when I see stuff like this, or I think about a lot of the leaves and things that I'm constantly finding, you know, outside in my backyard. Let's see if I can't get this to zoom in on the beautiful texture here. Not so much, but, um, you know, it's, I'm always trying to create that texture or just create the different things that I see out in the world. And, I just want to bring that to the plate. So I just wanted to kind of just express some of the different things that I do here. So now this is kind of dried, right? So I'm going to take this down. It's still kind of a little bit tacky. So this is a great time to just take like a print that you're looking to build on and just kind of see what you can pull up. You know, and that's that's kind of the fun thing and just build. You can't wreck any of this. None of it is meant to be perfect. It's not so precious that and look at how this kind of pulled up some of that paint, which is amazing. I love it when it does that. So I'm just going to kind of go in here with my fingers. My fingers are always really dirty after doing any of this. It's my favorite tool to use. And I love picking up some of the some of the paint even. And I've got a lot of blue underneath there. So that black might is kind of hidden behind that. But that's like some interesting texture already. Okay, this has got this is this is pretty interesting. I like where that's going. All right, and this is why I like working with different plates here. You know, there's a lot of little things that you can you can kind of get going. And I think I'm gonna end up pulling this all up <clears throat> as one print, but I need to add a little bit more. So I think because I've got this interesting kind of like purplish, teal, green, maybe even a little bit of yellow still in there. Um, this is really cool because this is like the first print off this plate. I want to add a different color. So I'm going to add, let's see here. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think I'm either going to add orange or let's see here. Cadmium free orange. I like to paint my lids so that I can kind of get a good feel for what the color is. And that's like a little too bright, bright. I want an orange that's a little bit more like richer in tone. So let's take this one. 
You know, I don't make my way over to Charlotte very much, but Charlotte in North Carolina, Liz, is where the only, the only Ikea is. And that like makes me want to go there because I'm like dying to just go and get a couple bookcases and stuff. We have nothing over here in Raleigh. So I'm just going to grab some of this and add a little bit of interest with the egg carton. I love my egg carton. This one makes the best circles. It's a little different than the styrofoam ones. I kind of really gravitate towards the natural ones. Um, though in the store, they're hard to find a little bit. So I like how this is going, this composition here. Um, it needs a little tiny bit right here. So let's just add a little here. Maybe I'll get some one plate, one on another. There we go. Oh, who else has an Ikea near them and who else wishes they had one closer? <laughs> My friend Tiffany is always going to the Ikea that's near her in Vegas. And I'm like, she makes me jealous every single time she says it. I'm like, it's just not fair. <laughs> just not fair. Now, I love it when you have these kinds of little bits and stuff, odds and ends over here, too, with this. So let me see if I can't just like pull up a little bit and let me see if I can rub off some of this orange and just move it on to another plate. I like to use up as much paint as I can. Um, I don't like to, you know, waste it if I don't have to. I'm kind of digging this here. So let's kind of cool. Like in that, this yellow is a little too solid of a line here. Let's see if I can't just like, and I don't know if you could see that, but I can see it going across here and it just feels a little too perfect. So those kind of things, when you have a lot of this really cool, fun, organic feel to it, and then you have like the straight line that goes across, it kind of, I don't know, messes with it. Though I can always just tear and use bits and pieces. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just give this a real quick blast as I'm talking here. And uh, then take the pole in white. And this is really pretty. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, take the pull on tissue paper, which will be the first one, which is exciting. So because I'm gonna use tissue paper, this is something to note, depending on the type of paper that you use, if it's a thin piece like tissue, you're going to want to make sure that your uh, paint is not super, super thick. So because that's what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and build a layer here because I have a feeling that when I put the white down, I'm going to end up needing to pull a little bit off and shift it to another plate. And I don't really have a whole lot ready to be pulled. This one's kind of working on it. So let's work on a piece here. And let's do some kind of like reverse reverse printing, okay? So we've already got this, this brown, uh, black down. How about we add a little brown? Why not? Who says you can't use black and brown together? And you know what? Maybe I'll do, um, yeah, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to create kind of some of the stuff that I've been really loving to make lately. And I'm going to need to get, I'm totally leaving all my bright colors here. Sorry for those of you who really love brights. Um, I'm going to go now with some of the kind of more masculine kind of feel that I just really gravitate towards here. Um, and let's see here. What other color can we add? So many options. Let's actually add a little bit of a darker blue. And I don't want to add a lot of this because this is, and this is, um, Prussian blue. So this is a really overpowering color. Actually, let me not do this. Let me do this one instead. Greenish blue. This actually is kind of like a not quite navy-ish kind of color. Also, you know, deep dark. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically blend these together and I'm just kind of going for like a textured kind of look. So I just want to blend. I'm not worried about whether or not they're going to look good together or anything. I just want them to kind of blend. And then we're going to pull some stuff off. I want to get rid of all those little kind of little circle-ish things. I'm going to add a little bit of this here. It's going to be interesting with that orange. I didn't go very thick on that. Um, let me actually grab my... Oh, good Lord, I did it again. 
I keep hitting my keyboard and it makes the entire stream go away, which makes me scared that you guys are gone. So I'm just gonna kind of just get rid of, ooh, look at that. It's created this really pretty green, deep green. Okay, that's a little dark. So what I wanna do is I wanna very quickly take, take a little bit away. And so I'm just gonna, I'm just going to start pulling up a little bit. I wish I had grabbed another already pre-done one. This is good. Okay. I'm just going to take them a little bit away because this is going to allow some of that light to kind of come through. And I'm just going to kind of find the pattern a little bit, possibly. Um, you know what? I want to pull some different patterns up. So I don't want this to be all the same because again, I'm making like little kind of fodder kind of things in um, collaging. I'm not really looking to have this be perfect. It's not necessarily for a project specifically. Let's take a little bit more away here. I really need to grab a different piece of um, bubble wrap there. This will pull a lot up. Yep. And we'll take a little bit here and let's just, since this is pretty wet, let's just go ahead and work that up. All right, now I need that to kind of dry. And I've got, those of you that have long hair might understand that you have, I have like a long Ingrid hair in there, but it's stuck. Nothing I can do about that. All right, so let's go ahead and this is looking, oh, it was glossy, but it's dry, great. Um, let me take a quick app here, and then I want to pull this up. This is pretty dark, but that's okay, because sometimes I need something dark, and I've got some kind of brown mixed in with it, and then what I can do is I can add some interest to it on the other side with some white to kind of lighten it up. We're going to pull white behind it here, which is really going to brighten it up, actually. That's why we were removing all that kind of pattern stuff. And uh, then I'll be able to use that easily in a journal or a piece of art. So with this one, let's go ahead and this is all dry. So let's go ahead and do a little something here, although maybe not. I think that actually would be good enough. Taking white now. And we're going to take some pulls. I'd love to know in the chat or the description, um, description, the comments, if you're watching the replay, uh, who here has been creating with your gel plates? Maybe who is just a little afraid to? Remember, I want to keep this really, really light. So I'm starting here, and this is so far light, which is great, because if it's too if it's too um, heavy, then I'm not going to be able to pull it up on tissue paper, and it will take forever to dry. So let me take a piece of tissue paper and just get this down before moving on to the next piece, since that is actually rather light. Perfect. And it's okay if you have wrinkles, that makes it really interesting. I'm actually really impressed that I got that down so solidly. Uh, usually I get a lot more wrinkles than that. And you can see this one is a little bit thicker, which is fine. I just wanna make sure that I have good coverage here because I wanna be able to pull up all that paint that's underneath it. And I think on this one, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm gonna also, no, maybe not. Let's do let's do jelly paper on this one. I have found that my smaller sheets of deli paper are a little bit not as waxy as my other ones, even though they're both waxy, which is interesting. They're made by different brands. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Now these are both super, super cool right now. And I'd love to hear in the chat or in the comments, when your prints are cool, what does that mean? Yes, this is going to be partly educational. There are a lot of you that have been here before. Love to know. I'm going to add a little bit of white to here. Yeah. 
you never know. I may just have something for somebody. <laughs> Who knows that? <laughs> Excellent. Not dry. Yes. Ready to pull. When to for it to be ready to pull, you want your you want your paper to feel slightly warm to your touch. So what I want you to do as you're printing, great job, great job, guys, ladies, I should say, chickies, um, great job. Yes, when your print is wet, it is going to come off as cool. Now, if you've put a really light coat here, then uh, you'll be able to pull it a lot faster. And I think what we'll do right after these is we'll take some real quick pulls of solid colors just so we have a little bit of that too. I'll play a little bit with some mixtures maybe. And um, and what's really cool about that is that that's where you can do pull after pull after pull. Maybe sometimes you can get like three pulls from one. You know me, I love to, my kind of like go-to technique is to uh, kind of layer those. Um, and so when you're layering, you need to let them dry like this. Otherwise, you're only going to pull up the parts that have completely dried. Now, since I'm using tissue paper here, tissue paper is super, super um, fragile, I guess is the best word. It's just not very thick. So here's what happens when you have um, paint, a gel plate, and paper. The fibers of the paper get wet. And so the wet from the paint um, will, whatever part is weaker, the paper, since the fibers are wet, it's not going to be strong enough to pull up whatever is underneath it. The plate is going to win the pull between the two. Once the paint starts to dry and bond with the paper, even something so frail and fragile like this, or just a sliver of a paper napkin, right, one of those layers, then you'll be able to actually pull up the paint that's on the plate and the plate will actually be the considered the weakest out of the two and it will give up the cool art. That's kind of how a jelly plate works. So this one had the lightest out of all of them, the lightest amount of paint. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one first because that one, I don't know if I'm going to get everything underneath it because I don't know if this was wet enough to do that. We'll see, because there were a couple of um, layers on there that have been on there for a while. I can still feel that these are a little wet, so we may have to actually shift to another plate in order to do a pull or do some more. Let me go ahead and just kind of tear this to a size, a different, a short, smaller size that's a little bit more manageable. And you know what's really nice is I love like buying, I don't know if you have, if you're in the States, and I don't know if they have these outside of the States, but we have these like um, big stores where you can buy like bulk items. And um, I love buying at the holidays, those big white tissue paper things, because you can get so much tissue paper for so much less. If Unless anybody has like a really great resource for tissue paper, I'm all ears. Um but that's usually like where I get it and it lasts me for forever. But now that I'm starting to gel print with tissue paper more and more, I don't know, I may go through my stash. <laughs> All right, this feels, this one feels like it's ready. So, so let's go ahead and pull this. Oh yes. Now you can see this is where the, there was a crinkle and where there's a crinkle, you have air in between, so the paint is going to be left behind, which is totally fine because that's just something interesting for the next print. I call that paying, paying your print forward. So you can see this paint was um, on there, and I didn't have enough paint on here to bond to that and the actual, um, the actual tissue paper. Ooh, but some of it's coming up, which is exciting. Oh, and you can see here. So this is like not quite, it's, this is in the drying phase. It's dry enough that it's pulling up here, but some of it's staying behind. So some of the paint is, the gel plate's actually winning that. And it's not that the tissue paper is weak enough that it's going to tear. That's what happens when it's torn. 
the paper itself is so weakened by being wet that it actually tears apart and the gel plate actually takes some of the paper. So that's not happening here, just some of the paint is being left behind. So, because the, the plate is a little stronger and that's because we just didn't have enough white for it to bond and lift it and that's okay. They're called paint scabs. This is working really well. And this is really what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for some interesting little bits that I can use collage. Um, I use these all the time. Um, they're really interesting because you can tear them and just use them like a little bit. If you can envision this being, let's say a card. Okay. And so you may have just a little bit that you've done here and maybe you take a little bit of this and you put it down on the other end. And now you've got something interesting kind of framing your space. Uh, there's just so many ways to use this. And I've got some very interesting texture. I've got a little bit of lines from the drywall tape. I've got a little circle that um, complementary colors, those kind of pop off each other. Stuff has blended together to make that beautiful green. And I've got interesting stuff that was left behind that get, got paid forward to the next one. I can even see the drywall tape texture on there and that's going to look really cool so because those are all blues and greens and stuff I will probably do like pinks and something else on here just to kind of give a little bit of contrast and that makes that very interesting now this is not dry enough so I'm going to keep going onto some other plates and just kind of let that do its thing and kind of dry it a little here so we'll move this one to here this one still feels a little tiny bit wet. Feels like it's a little wet, but it's deli paper, so it's a little stronger than tissue paper. I just don't want to tear all this. This was a pretty cool pattern, and I just feel like I want to see that one. Hey there, Joanne from New Jersey. I used to live in New York. Not that far. Love Jersey. All right, so we're just pulling this up. Ooh, look at all that. So let's see if we can't get it to dry a little bit better. And I may just go a little faster. Yep. And again, that's where that, you can see I had that wrinkle here. So that air is keeping that pattern and that paint behind, which is totally fine. It's paying it forward. Oh, love that. This is really cool. I do a lot of things with these colors. I do wanna brighten this up a little bit more but you can see all the white that came through where we pulled the pattern off. That um, is really cool. So I would probably add a lot more white, especially some nice splatter or something, and that I can do at a different time. Excellent, love that. This one I want to, I'll give you a sneak peek, right? Oh, that actually looks, I knew that would look really cool. So um, yeah. I want to let that dry so that I can actually pull that up. That's actually going to be really nice. I can actually collage that even onto a card. So that's got a lot of a lot of possibilities. Let's just take one more pass at it before doing some more on a different plate. And let's just go ahead and do some tone on tone things as well. It's funny, I, I don't know about you, Who's what kind of color palette have y'all been using lately? Brights, muted, neutrals? Me, myself, I have been doing a little bit of everything, kind of. Uh, a lot of like muted, as well as, um, some uh, brights a lot lately. Ooh, metallics. Neutrals, interesting. Everybody's kind of like in that neutral kind of mode. I love that. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of brown. No, that's black. Let's do a little bit of Van Dyke brown, which is my favorite. Brights, a little bit of brights going here. Nice. A little bit of Van Dyke, got some brown, and let's mix 
some brown. What if we did a little bit of gold, right? Deep gold, let's see. Some brown and some gold, and let's see what happens there. I don't usually grab metallics a lot, but you guys have me a little bit inspired here. Um, and let's see. Let's do a little bit of that dark blue. I'm not so sure about that. Well, maybe a little tiny bit here. Just a teeny tiny bit. And with the gold, maybe a little bit of turquoise, right? Navy and orange. I love the combination of navy and orange. It just pops so well. Oh, it's just so beautiful. So because this is like so bright, bright, and that gold is going to be interesting to blend that together. Let me just now come in here with the turquoise and just blend that out. And the brown and the gold is going to be nice. The gold and the turquoise will be interesting. Just kind of wanting to blend out. If you're new to this, you want to make sure you're lifting your brayer a little bit. Love that there. Very cool. And just go ahead and, oh, I don't want my nice print that I just pulled. Let's take that up and we'll just take a couple pulls here. Just looking to get some color, right? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Oh, well now, now I need to get some Oh, that was like really cool. I didn't expect that. I don't usually use gold. I'm really liking the metallic. That's really neat. Taking that. Take up just a little bit there and leaving that behind. Nice. That's kind of cool. Now, I like to use little things like this where you have that blue and that brown together. Like to me, I'll use those little pieces and that's what I'm kind of looking for um, from today. This is gorgeous. I love this. I get so mesmerized with colors like this. So like even just taking like this little tiny bit and having a little bit of that turquoise there to pop, that would be great on the side of a um, art journal page or on a canvas or in a card. There's so many options. And then maybe even layering something lighter even on top. That's kind of cool. So we'll let this, and this isn't going to take very long to dry because that's pretty thin. Yeah, that turned out really cool. Navy mint. Ooh, that's interesting. I don't have anything that's mint-like. Wow, I am really, really loving that. Okay, I'm going to keep the gold out. <laughs> i got to be honest. I think that's the first time I've ever used the gold. I've had it for over a year. <laughs> interesting. It's funny how we don't necessarily gravitate towards certain colors. Ooh, I'm, I'm feeling like deep ochre now, maybe. Um, the yellow, deep, oh, I don't know. This is really bright. That is really bright. Maybe we'll put some gold behind that. That would be interesting. So let's do some gold here. And I still have some Color choices, color choices, orange, why not? We'll see what happens. I don't think it's gonna look that great, but we'll see. We'll experiment. I'm in an experimental phase at the moment. And you know what? I'm gonna see if I can maybe keep the middle, the middle kind of clear. I may just come in with some white. Ooh, that's pretty. And see what this does, the magenta and the Ooh, that's kind of nice. So I'm just kind of brayering that out so it's got that feathered look. And then we'll come in with maybe some white here and just kind of leave that as is. I grabbed paper just in case. I didn't expect to do a whole lot of stuff with paper, but I'm feeling this would actually look really cool as a card. So you never know, right? I really truly did not expect to, um, to use paper today uh, versus more the the softer sheets. So let's just pull that up. Oh, it didn't pull the stuff underneath because I didn't let it dry, but I'm really loving that. Look, it took a little bit of it up, which has a little bit of grunge. So this will make a very interesting like little tag, or I can use it in other ways. I can even layer other patterns on top if I wanted to. Let's see if I have any of that. Oh, I do. Excellent. 
a little bit more of that grungy kind of goodness left. And we'll just kind of grayer that off. This should be dry by now. Yep, it is working quickly here. This is drying, which is good. Still want to take a little pass because it's too pretty for it to not pull up together. And I can tell that it's um, still wet, kind of like it's super, super like the paper's kind of really wrinkly here. Um, I don't know. I think I feel like that's going to kind of settle a little bit as it dries. Um, you know how paper, when it gets wet, it moves a little bit. So, all right. I kind of really loving this grungy stuff I got going on here. So let's let's actually add a little bit of white to this. Um, I guess I'm torn. I want to do some pattern, but at the same time, let's see if I can't pull some pattern up here. I don't think I'll be able to, but you never know. So this is where I start taking these kinds of pieces where I, I just didn't really have a whole lot on it. And you'd be surprised at what you can what you can actually pull onto it. I think that's going to actually pull some up. Yep. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Okay. So this is what I want you all to do. I want you to just sit. I want you to play, have some fun. You know, that's what it's all about, right? So a little bit's coming up, but what's really going to be nice about this is when I lift this, it's going to actually, some of it's going to stick to the stencil, leaving that pattern even more behind into there. So it's kind of like that got this little bit of distressed look to it. And it's nice because the middle is clear, remember? Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is add some white to this just kind of pull that up because it's kind of pretty just that little this is what I'm looking for is like these little grungy bits because those are great in projects so I'm gonna do let's see here some white but just little tiny bits and I think what I'm gonna do is also pull up well no I hope it's fun listening to me kind of talk out loud. You're getting to hear my thought process a little. All right, there we go. So because this is really, really super light, I'm just gonna tear this and pull this up with some tissue paper because it's not a lot of paint and it's gonna dry super quick. Again, know your materials. Um, paper, you know, is way sturdier, right? So you can pull a lot faster. Tissue paper, you got to let it dry a little tiny bit, but it doesn't take as much as you think when those layers are really, really light. Ah, Cricut. Starting with a 5 by 7 that's a great size to start with. Bigger size is definitely on your, on your budget. Love it. It's 100% worth it. I started with a six by six, which I'll be honest, was a very frustrating size to start with because I had to cut my paper <laughs> to fit it. It didn't, and so I felt like it wasn't, it, it made the process, I think, a little bit more um, frustrating, which made me not use it as much because I, in my head, I had six by six stencils because I was a card maker. And so in, in my mind, that was what made sense. And it actually ended up not really being so great. But I do recommend that you all start with uh, two plates if you can. Um, and, you know, they have, they're pretty reasonable. They're not crazy expensive. It is a tool that you will use way more than you realize, uh, especially for projects. And you can add bits and bobs, kind of like that little short that I posted today. Um, yeah, five by seven is the perfect size to start with. You're right. Because you can cut a sheet of eight and a half by 11 and a half, and then it'll fit. It'll fit right on it. And this actually, these are cut a little thinner, but um, it actually fits right on it. And it's great. It's a perfect size to start with. And it's okay if you have six by six stencils and they don't fit over a five by seven plate. That's totally fine too because you're going to end up trimming it down anyway. All right, we ready? This is going to be grungy. I want to pull all this grunge up. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. See, this makes me so happy. 
And because it's tissue paper, when we add things like matte medium or collage medium or gel medium um, in like transferring this to um, a art journal, say a coaster or something like that, it becomes completely uh, transparent, which is really nice. But when you have paper that is more and more opaque and it's a little bit thicker, like cardstock, that doesn't, it, you can see the white, whereas this just kind of blends in with the background. Oh my gosh, I love what's going on here. Oh, this is exactly what I've been wanting. Look at that. And this is great because these are, and this was the gold and the magenta. Look, it created this really, really beautiful, beautiful picture. Kind of like um, orange, a deep sunset orange almost. This is really cool because it's kind of like grungy. I look at like old Italian, you know, worn buildings that have been around for a hundred years or more uh, going through the countryside. Um, and uh, kind of having that little bit of that pattern in there, which is interesting. Um, I know it doesn't look like much, but when you start putting it into art and you start putting it into an art journal and you start using them in different ways, it's amazing because it's that little something that you didn't even know you needed. All right, this is starting to get there, not quite there. All right. Let's go ahead and do something with this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this because this is kind of cool and I wanna do more stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and add some white. Notice I'm keeping, this is really not a lot of paint because I wanna keep this nice and light so that um, I can easily pull it up without having it take too long today. Part of that is because we're live. Um, if it were just me doing this, I'd probably go a little deeper and I'd be a little bit more patient and just allow that um, to come up. So I'm gonna go ahead and use deli paper. Again, I think if I were just doing this at home, I would probably be a little more patient with tissue paper. Um, just knowing what my needs are right now for crafting, but I'm recognizing that that's taking a long time to dry and I don't want you to just sit here and have me just talk at you. So, okie doke. So some of the things that I have been experimenting with lately because I'm trying to identify what my particular style is. Um, Cause like I said earlier, my artistic style is starting to shift a little bit. And I'm starting to realize that I am, because I love using a gel plate and I love creating amazing art with it. The thing that I love to do is to just find textures in the things like in everyday life. Okay. So like, I don't just look at a leaf. When I look at the underside, it's got such depth and beauty to it. Or maybe there's another leaf that is just so worn, it's got these interesting hues to it, or maybe spots, and something like that will actually spark ideas for me. And I might then it becomes my goal to just create more and more texture. And let me give you an idea here. I've got one off to the side here, I believe that I just did the other day. I was just playing around the other night and I was just creating some texture. And this is just playing with some colors. And I was looking at um, actually a photo that I had taken uh, in Tuscany of a wall. And it was really worn and it kind of had these deep water stains and it just had this very interesting look to it. And so I just wanted to create that. Um, in art and this was just a base layer and it's gonna have a lot more other stuff on it but I'm just all about creating that texture and I can do that also by just looking at the things that are around us in our environment you know um, leaves and maybe it's looking at you know the patio that I've got out back and all the texture uh, between the lines and the the concrete or maybe it's just walking down the street or driving down the block and there's an old dilapidated building you know, that'll spark something in my mind. And so I, my style is really to try to recreate the different textures of life using the materials that I have. This is totally dry. It's so warm. I wish I could convey the difference in temperature to you guys so that you could feel it. 
Um, who here has experienced that when you've uh, taken your own pulls? Touch the back and felt how cool it is and then let it sit. Be patient enough for that to where then it um, feels warm enough and you can pull that up. Wow, look at that. It's kind of, I, this is, did not work. It's not, or it didn't work. That makes me sad. I was too impatient. Well, now it's coming up. That makes me sad when that happens. It's leaving, it's leaving behind a lot of the pattern, which is sad to me. Hmm. And tearing. So you can see if normally if it were me, I probably would have left it, let it dry overnight, and that would have then peeled up just perfectly fine. Well, that didn't make you want to do that, did it? Oh, it was such a cool pattern. I still have a lot of really cool things that I can work with here, which is exciting because even if it's leaving some of it behind, again, that's just paying it forward. Live crafting, everybody. Oh, look at that come up. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I love the black with it. That was a good choice. You can see the plate one out there. All right, cool. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so pretty. Yeah, Winnie's not my strong suit either. That's why I have multiple plates. <laughs> so that I can lift the plate up, put it to the side, and grab a new one. <laughs> that took time <laughs> to learn. Um, oh, my gosh. This is really, really pretty. I think I really, really love... I'm glad this is recorded because I don't remember what we did up top. I feel like it was magenta. Do we use magenta up here? Because I know I didn't have purple down. Um, whatever it was, it mixed with the blue, so it was probably magenta. And look at the orange that's in there. That is so nice, so cool. Um, and it's totally fine that it, for me, again, these are collage pieces for me. That's why I'm using something so, so super thin. Um, I'm really digging this pattern. Do you ever just kind of sit there and look at what you made? <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> All right. Well, here, this is a brand new plate. So that was like the first real print. So look at what's left behind that we get to now pay forward to the next print. Okay. This is one of the cool things about gel printing. And that's why you could probably hear my disappointment when this wasn't coming up as one piece. But now... I'm actually looking at it and I'm actually glad that happened because look at what gets to be on the next layer. So because I had this experience and because we're doing this live and I don't want to sit here and just, um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Cricket. I love this pay it forward. Thank you, Chris. It was magenta on turquoise. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to use deli paper because that's going to be stronger to peel, to peel this up. Um, Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. And it's got that really nice pattern. It's got some of the rings. It's got some black in there. It's got multiple tones of color. And it's got this kind of crinkly texture from the wrinkles that were on here. So this is going to be amazing. So now what's really important is us thinking about colors. Um, and I can do a couple things here. I might not want to take an entire print. I may just want to, I could, sorry, I'm kind of thinking out loud here because this is live and um, you can't plan these things. Mono, this is a mono print, meaning that there's only going to be one ever. You can't recreate this. You could try, but it's not going to happen. Uh, not this perfect. Look at even the yellow from the very first layer there. So amazing. Um, if I were to go in with a really dark color, it would overpower this. So I have to pick something that's going to be complementary, something, and I don't really feel like putting yellow behind it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, I think I am going to uh, pull this up with white because I actually really, really love this. No. Okay. Brave. 
Be brave, Ingrid. Let's go ahead and pull this up. In the meantime, this way I have I have two that I can work with also. Probably should have let this dry too, but ooh. Ooh, look at that fun little pattern that we got going on there. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I'm loving this. Talk about two totally different, two totally different prints. Very different color palettes. Look at that. Yet this is the same color, but completely different styles, right? We've got the brights, and then here we have that muted, and I love this gold that's going on right here. And this kind of like lightning bolt from those wrinkles from the print before. Loving that. Oh, we've got a lot of really great things that we have going on here. Okay, I think I'm gonna put magenta down. see. I may have to dig in here and look for more liquid. I don't have my liquids all that accessible right at this moment. All right. I'm going to look for different a different option here. So in looking at this, let's see what we have. Maybe we try like this. It's been a long time since I've used this. I hope it's still good. This is this is a yellow, but it's not like an in-your-face yellow. It's kind of a little bit more, um, more subdued. It is an opaque color, which is good versus being transparent. Um, if it's transparent, then it would you'd really see everything together. Whereas if it's opaque, then this will probably blend on top of it. So let's see here. Hmm, that actually might be interesting. Okay, let's put that out as an option. Um, green patina, no. Yellow oxide, huh. That's a gorgeous color, very hard to get and if anybody has, oh, let's try that. Anybody has um, an idea, I'm all ears. It's a group project. The cool thing about this is we got two sides, right? So we can try two different things. So let me just pop this down just so we can take a look. So we've got denim as an option. I'll shake these all up. I could do gold. Gold would be interesting. A uh, butter. Cricket saying navy. <laughs> now navy's gonna be too dark and it's gonna overpower it. Key lime, I think, though, might be interesting. Might be better choice than the butter. What are y'all thinking? And I think I might try gold on one of the other side. Yeah, I agree with you. Gold would be interesting for sure. Um, let me try some key lime here. Key lime and gold. We'll go with those two. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is exciting. Do y'all get this exciting? Excited about your crafting? About your art? It's been a while since I've used these, so I just want to shake these up. I hope they're okay. Let's, rather than testing them out on something that's real, yeah, they're fine. Okay. I think I'm gonna probably try this first. Now these are the pa the fresco finish, the um, kind of chalk acrylics by uh, Paper Artsy. Yeah, I think this is going to be very pretty. It's going to be interesting behind that kind of purplish up there. Let me take my small brayer here so that I don't feel like I have to do everything. Ooh, yes. Sorry. Yes, that looks great. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of brayer it out so that I got a nice little blend going. And um, I so want to put that on, on tissue paper, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take something stronger, lay that down, and just kind of go out from there. Okay. I'm just going to let that dry. And then on the other side here, 
Let's go ahead and add, let's see if there's any, oh, there's none left, wow. That was really cool. Oh yeah, I love, I love just trying, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Look how cool that looks. Oh, I love, I just love gel printing. So much fun. Okay, so let's compare it with the gold. It'll be interesting. And almost kind of feel like I should, maybe. You know what I'll do is let's do some gold here, right behind it. That'll be fascinating. A little bit of gold, but let's put some navy over here. I know I just made you happy, didn't I? Didn't I, Chris? <laughs> let's put some navy over here. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll grab a stencil too to pull a little bit of it away um, from here. I should have, I should wait to do this side, but. Mm. Okay, I like have so much in my head right now. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take something, some sort of texture mark making and let's let's do egg carton. And the egg carton and let's take some circles, some other things as well. Okay, let's start, let's get that braired out. So pretty. Ooh, wow, I'm really loving that. And I'm just gonna get some of that gold and navy together. Okay, it's not quite navy, but ah, oh, so pretty. I just want like a light, a light version of it on that one side. I want this to just kind of blend out a little. Nice. Very, very cool. So let's let's actually take a little bit of some of these circles out because this will give us some interest and it will allow some of the light to come in. And I just want to get a little bit of other textures in here and a little bit of this. Let's just go ahead and press that in because it'll just create something interesting. And I've even got some other little circles here. And I want to actually add a little tiny bit more of the gold because I feel like that dried. Although that's okay, because you know what? Now that I think about it, let's let that all dry. And um, let's let that dry. I'm gonna lay this down and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually pull just a few and we're gonna take this beautiful print that we have and here on the bottom, I've got some lighter colors. So this will be really pretty. Just kind of pull up a little bit. I'm not trying to see how interesting that is. Now we're getting, now we're really getting somewhere. Yeah, cause it's gonna pull up that and it's gonna allow some light to come through once we add the white, which is what I want to do. Okay, here, and that gold is just gorgeous. Beautiful, okay. Now we're just starting to layer. And this is where this kind of stuff becomes really, really super interesting um, in like art journaling and on other pieces where you start to collage it together. So I'm just gonna pull that up so I've got some very interesting pattern going on here. And look at all that together. That's very cool. Now I may not use those together. You never know, they may not really go together, but that's okay. This is kind of cool. I'm really loving, this actually, believe it or not, feels dry. So let's see, let's see if it's pulling it up. There's a little bit of tension between it. So it's not all coming up, just a little tiny bit is. I probably needed to add like some white or something. Yep, didn't really. I need to add some thicker paint. The paint was too thin and that's okay. Cause now I've got a little bit more of the key lime there. Let's just add a little bit more and let's just make this like an entire print and do a little bit more of this stuff going on. I want to kind of get rid of this thick 
line here. So uh, I just want to kind of get rid of this thick line that I got going on here. So pretty. I forgot about these, these paints. That's what happens when you have too much stuff, right? Who here has too much stuff? <laughs> I know I do. Yeah, this is going to be way cool. I'm very excited about it. And I've got some really like harsh kind of lines going on over here. I'm going to let this dry for a second and then we're going to add some white to it and we're going to take a pull and I may actually add some black to that. I'm not really liking how harsh this line is. I want to be able to lift that up. Oh, I know what I'm going to use. I'm going to use, I'm going to use a paintbrush. I need to get a little bit more wet. Yeah, good paint is a must. When you are, um, and you know what? I don't even have like really, really good paint. I have, I have, I have decent paint. Um, I don't have artist, I don't have artist uh, level paints. I'm starting to acquire them a little bit here and there. Um, these are the golden artist colors. They're gorgeous. The difference between these um, and kind of anything else you might be you might be using is pigmentation, believe it or not. And um, just really blends the artist colors. They blend so beautifully. But you know what? For gel printing and stuff, I actually, I'm doing really well just with um, what I got here. So I'm actually okay with it. I would like to have a little bit more interesting pattern. So let's actually take some flowers and just pull some of this up. I think it might have dried. It was so light. That layer, that paint is really drying fast. I've had it for a long time. That could be part of it. I'm also not putting a crazy lot down. Bye, Chris. I hear you. I love pulling up these flowers though. This is this is like really interesting now. I'm wanting to add a little bit of brown to it or something, but I think I'm gonna do it on the flip side and add those to the top layers. So let's go ahead. These are all dry. You can see I can touch them. Nothing's happening. Same thing over here. Um, I've got this uh, blue. I wanna add a little bit of um, magenta to this and Let's add, this will be something totally different. And let's just kind of brayer that out a little. I'm gonna leave that one there. So I've got green. The green and the magenta are not gonna to go together, obviously. Let's just brayer some of that off. And some of the magenta out, and it's blending with that blue. You can see it kind of turns a little bit purplish, which is pretty, just kind of Rearing it out a little, just wanting to get some different lines. I'm not worried right now about anything being perfect. I want a little bit of orange here. Actually, you know what? I'll take that back. Let's do um, let's do some gold. I'm like addicted to this gold all of a sudden. I don't know who turned me on to this gold. Great job. <laughs> this is so pretty. Yeah, because it's turning into kind of like orangish a little, if you will. Uh, really, really pretty. I'm going to actually add a little bit of that in here for just something different. All right, digging that. And this is pretty just like as a solid. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just let that dry really quick and I'll throw a little bit of transparent white on it and take that as a solid pull. I'm not gonna worry about patterning too much, although I can see a little bit of pattern underneath it. Really, by mistake. I, I agree, I, you know, it's funny, Cricket. You, you'd be surprised at how many happy accidents there are, right? How many things you do by mistake. I do it all the time.
I love it when I get prints like that. And those are the prints when you get those really beautiful ones um, that you almost don't want to, you don't want to cut up, <laughs> right? Any of them there? <laughs> hey there, how are you? Um, you know, when I have those, those are the ones I turn into coasters because there is nothing better than having, you know, something like this and then your just drink is on it. It makes me so happy around the house to have like all these like leaf prints and all these artistic things. I have ones with my mom's papers that I did with the, um, uh, with the, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, uh, the Van Gogh stencil uh, over on my desk. I put my, I put my glass on it every single day, which makes me think of her. And I just love taking her own work, right? The things that you're pouring your emotions and your heart and your, you know, sometimes your sadness into, but sometimes your real joy into something else and you're paying it forward into, into other really great things. And that's really why I love making things like this that I can also put in other pieces of art. I have to tell you, this has like become one of my favorite things here. I'm loving this look. It's so pretty and it'd be perfect for masculine cards. All right. So I need I'm rambling. I find that I'm rambling sometimes lately. I need some transparent white, transparent white for here. Right. And we're going to do white, white over here. And I want enough to pull that up. All right. Because we need enough that it will pull it up. Because that's what I'm, I'm doing wrong right now is because I'm like so worried that stuff isn't going to dry. I'm not putting enough paint on. This needs more paint, too. And part of it too is really when I'm thinking about it, it's summertime, it's hot, um, you know, is stuff drying? Is it drying too fast? Okay, so gotta get enough of a wet layer down in order to pull that up. So I've got all that coolness over there. Let me take some ice paper. I'm going to do this on the gritty side. I hope that's wet enough. All right. I don't think that was enough paint, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's smash that in there and see if we can't really get a good bond. Okay. It's time, I, I'm going to admit, it's time that I clean my brayer. It's getting to that time. I don't clean them all the time, but uh, every now and then, the more you do, you start to collect paint on some of these, and that's where you start to get those weird marks and stuff. And you don't want to wreck your, you don't want to wreck what you're doing with something like that. Okay, so now we just need titanium white for this one, and this is gonna be so cool. I'm so excited. This is gorgeous. Got to put enough paint down. Okay, and before I brayer this out, I need to make sure that I have my. Um, my paper ready and that's my deli paper so let's go ahead and get that all brayered out although part of me wants to put this on regular cardstock but if i do that then i can't use it in collage i mean i can on like coasters and stuff like that but this is actually too much this is actually too much white so Go ahead, let's see what I have on the other plate from this morning. Okay. Let's go ahead and just see if I can't pull some more up. Deli paper is it's a great question. It's waxed, but it's not the same as wax paper. 
Um, it's lighter than that. So if you've ever gotten been at a place that has hamburgers or sandwiches um, or like french fries, it's that thing that absorbs some of that oil. Like you'll see them wrap uh, sandwiches in it. Um, not butcher paper, but uh, yeah. So that's, let me show you. It's technically interfolded this is interfolded dry waxed paper so that's the differences it's dry wax um and i have a couple different i have them linked on the supply the supply list in the description of both sizes that i use this is a size that i use for my 9 by 12. this is the one that i use um for my smaller oh good lord i forgot that i had that on there let me quickly pull that this is the one that I use for my um, for my eight by ten. So this is a eight by ten. So it fits the eight by ten plate perfectly, and uh, just really kind of just wanting to leave a pattern behind, you know, paying it forward and stuff. Um, cool. That'll be nice. I can put dark colors behind that. Um, this one though, this one's made by uh, Brown Paper Goods, and this one is made by Handy W A C K S. And this one I find to be super, super thin and not as waxy as this one. Um, so I'm finding this to be a little bit more preferable for me in collage um, versus this sometimes it's just a little too waxy. I have to make sure that I have this side. So I can pull my print um, on this side. Uh, that way I'm gluing the shiny side down. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. Awesome. It's hard to find in Europe. Um, when I lived there, I honestly, I couldn't find it. It was really, really hard to find. Um, so let me see how this comes up here. If there's stuff left behind on this one, it's okay. Uh, ooh, nice. It feels like it's not 100% dry, but um, the rice paper... Uh, absorbed it really well. Ooh. Oh, I'm loving this. Oh, and it's nice. It's pulling up all a lot of the excess. Okay, let's leave. Let's take that with us. Oh, that was great. That cleaned the plate. I'm loving this. Remember, I was not, uh, and these are left over from a print before. Okay. Um, actually, I wasn't even trying to do it. That was me just using the the uh the actual egg card, yeah, it does look like a galaxy. I can probably just do some white splatter and that would actually be a card. I could put that on something. That would be amazing. Um, I was actually just doing this. And so these are all those leftover marks <laughs> as I was going down the plate. How cool was that? That was unintended. Uh, and this is just a lot of stuff left around. Um, really loving this. It almost looks kind of like a rubber band technique thing. And this is on rice paper and rice paper is great for collage. So this is going to work really, really well for me. Um, I'm loving this. So this was the gold, if you remember, and it's kind of turned into a pale pink. So I have the magenta that was here and the gold here and blending together turned into this kind of rose color. And uh, this was the lime green. And then this was the blue, the, the dark, dark blue is in the middle. Uh, that is Prussian blue. And then, yeah, no, sorry. That is the magenta going into turquoise, I believe. Very fascinating. Cool stuff. I always am mesmerized when I do uh, gel printing. Yeah, I agree. So cool. So while this is drying, let's just kind of take a look at some of the things that we've done. So I've got that one and we've got this really amazing print. I love this one. This is gonna be some great stuff to use. This will be a fun little thing and I'll probably still build on this. You can see I'm just kind of starting to collect different little pulls on that. Um, I feel like there was more. Let's see here. We're not done yet. And this was, we'll need to add more and more to this because it's way too yellow for me. Um, but then again, with gesso, you can knock a lot of that back. What I really love is having these kind of like turquoise pieces right here. Um, 
everything kind of flew down when I was working on something. So I don't know where the other ones went. Um, this was a couple little pools, so you can see those flowers on top of that. This is nothing. I'll just build more and more on that. You need to have poles like this so that you can just continue to build. Ah, and then I forgot the most the prize, the one that was unexpected. And we're starting to build on top of that. Now, what I'll do on here is start to add a little bit of brown stuff a little bit to it. And then that'll give me something really interesting um, to add to art. I really love this. I'm so going to combine those colors again. Not done yet. We got more. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. I agree with you, Joanne. All right, so one of the things that I would like to do though is just to create some solid ones. I think I said that like an hour ago, right? And I still haven't really done that <laughs> other than the rainbow one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if this, well, let's see. This will determine how, how brave I am in pulling or letting it wait. Yeah, ooh, I'm loving this. And this is kind of really cool. Look at the gold behind it. And this is kind of like interesting. It's like sherbet almost. It kind of feels tutti frutti ish. I like the flower there. So if you like severed this here, that would be a very interesting thing. I don't know if you can see this really cool flower. Um, it's kind of like this pattern that we have. Um, and I've got some interest uh, texture that we created using stencil and. A uh, little mark making tool. This is, um, I'm loving this. You guys are never going to believe what this is. Top of good old Tim Holtz collage paper. And what other things do you, you get that have stuff in it? These are all ways to make circles and other things when you have these containers. And they're hard plastic, which is really great because they will hold up and they won't break down. And I love it that it has this little tiny thing. It makes it easier to go ahead and, uh, you know, create something interesting. So by just quickly doing that in there, I created that interest in addition to the egg carton, um, as well as, yeah, the egg carton there. Yeah, a lot of different things. And I think there's different bubble wrap in here. And then you have the drywall tape in there. There's a lot of different interesting things. So it's just gonna be a matter of whether or not it's dry. All right, so much opportunity. I'd love for you to pop into the comments if you're watching the replay or in the chat, what other things can you use to make texture around the house? Think of your kitchen and your pantry. What other things? I think that's maybe what we'll do next. Let's do some tone on tone things, some things that are simple. We can pull some ghost prints. It's not gonna matter. We're not gonna have to worry about it drying. All right. I think what I'll do is I'll just let this dry a little bit. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and let it dry. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and do some simple, simple pulls. And I may, I may probably use rice paper for these. Yeah, that'll be a good idea. So since this is like a big roll of rice paper, let me go ahead and um, kind of just tear that and put it down here so that I have a couple. Okay. This stuff is not really all that cheap but I wanna use it for paintings. Um, <clears throat> just really make some cool collages. But I need tone on tone prints, kind of tone on tone-ish. Um, so let's do, I want some like deeper colors. I'm really kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm like wanting to do that same kind of thing that we had going on with the gold. So, just so pretty. I'm gonna add some gold down. I said we were gonna to do tone on tone, didn't I? <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> Ooh, dragging a fork, great idea. What else? Come on. I know you're all very creative. What other things? Dragging a fork is a great idea. 
So I've got kind of like that Prussian blue and I've got the um, gold here. What else can I do? Prussian blue, gold, something over here. Let's, I've got this olive green deep. Wow, I did not expect me to actually go for um, muted colors. Interesting, fascinating. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I am going to brayer out the gold first. It's the lightest out of all of them, right? You want to go out, that's kind of feathers it out. And then now I'm going to come into the green, this kind of olive with the gold is going to be, oh, wow, that's pretty. And I'm just going to take the olive, you know, let me add a little bit of this to here because that's a lot of paint. Let me add a little bit here. Oh, this Prussian blue is so pretty. It's a lot of paint though. You need to blend it a little bit more with the, with the gold. You know, it's just, it's like impossible for me to do solid colors. I don't know what it, I don't know why. <laughs> I actually have to laugh at myself a little bit. All right, I've got too much paint going on here. Come on, Ingrid. Okay. Let's just take a pull. I'll probably take a couple. I'm going to do this quickly. Ooh, nice. Okay. And then now, let me go ahead and take... Uh, let me take, uh, I was going to do some patterns, wasn't I? I haven't used this stencil in a while. I love this stencil. This is by Joggles. And um, let's go ahead and add that to, let's add some of this to here. Not all of it, just some of it. Ooh, 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 that's pretty. And let's take let's take a few of this on their own, or maybe we'll add them. Let's add a little here. Like that. And just bits and bobs, right? That's what we're doing, bits and bobs. Just creating layers. Let's see here. Crinkle paper dabs. Silicone sauce paste. Wow, I've never done that. Paper wow, paper coin rolls. That's brilliant. I would have never thought to use those. So smart. So smart. Okay, this is cool. I'm loving that. Um, and here I should have actually pulled that. But um, yeah. I forgot, same thing here. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and pull that. I've got some tissue paper here. Just here a little on the side. Oh wow, it's totally dry. Same thing here, let's see if I can pull any of it out. A little tiny bit, not a lot. Um, I would love to be able to just kind of break that up a little tiny bit, just because it allows when I when I do that, like I get engrossed sometimes when I'm using multiple plates, and I forget that I haven't pulled anything up, and so I like to take something like this that has been worked a lot. And you can see it's got acrylic paint in there. So what that does is it has a tendency to kind of like grab onto things and pull them up when they're a little dry. And that's what's really good about using a brayer too around that. And you can see it's kind of breaking this up, which is going to work to our favor when we go and add white or whatever else we're going to add behind it, which is probably going to be transparent white. Um, and that's a little too perfect. Uh, because then uh, it'll allow that to shine through. Now, remember that we still have white um, on the front, but I want to have, maybe I'll put gold through it. That would be interesting. Um, wow, that's so cool. Because I was using magenta um, and yellow to paint like a flower earlier today in my art journal. 
Uh, so that's left on the plate. I have a tendency to use these as a paint palette when I'm doing like acrylic painting um, rather than having to waste money on the palettes and things like that. And then I just brayer out the paint afterwards and it makes the most amazing pulls. So this is really cool. I'm loving this. Um, let's go ahead and add some contrast to it because that's what it's lacking right now. Um, I love how we have these tone on tone um, leaves here. And then by adding the, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but by adding the uh, drywall tape through the stencil, I created, we have some that are like where we remove the paint and we have some that have that pattern, which is so interesting. Think of it like double stenciling a little bit. Um, this has a little bit too much of a solid color, but why not? We'll pull that too, just on as it is. These are all dry, so we can move on. All right. Let's take um, some gold, and I want to add some gold to this, because this is just so pretty. Um, now I'm addicted to the gold. Let's just do gold for the entire back. Why not? Why not? I've got such interesting texture on this. How many of you clean your brayers? Like when you have too much of a paint buildup. The nice thing about five by seven plates is you can take half of an eight by 10 deli paper and just pop that down and that leaves you the other side for another print because they fold nice and easily. Um, so we'll just do that and then we'll pull that up. So instead of white, I opted for gold because I was hoping that the metallic shining through would be kind of pretty. So we'll see how that decision ends up when we pull that. That was a really quick layered one there and that was like a cast off plate. It wasn't even intentional. I'm like really loving this, but it's kind of paralyzing me a little bit because it's like, I love the stencil so much that um, I get uh, I get a little uh, nervous sometimes. Is that weird? All right, let's see here. So um, let's go ahead and why don't we take some artist colors? This is a slightly transparent. You can see where the lines are coming through, how you can see that. So it's not 100% opaque. And oh, let's do that. Okay, so I've got cobalt, teal, and quinacridone. No, that's not going to work. Co cobalt, cobalt teal is a little too bright. But the quinacridone is going to be really pretty. And um, I think I'm going to want... Ooh. Let's add a little bit of this. All right. I'm doing just a little bit here. I said I was going to do tone on tone, didn't I? And I didn't. And I've got some yellow oxide. Well, that's thicker than this, so I better not do that. Um, green. I'm going to go with the gold down here. And let's do a little bit more here. That's opaque. This one's partially transparent. I should have flipped those because this is the pattern that would have been prettier on the. So let's do it. Let's do this. Okay. Pretty. Take that and bring that down here. So it's partially transparent, so that means that some of this will shine through. And let's just kind of blend those together here. This is not what I was expecting to do, but why not? It's just exploring, right? And I have a lot more than I want here. I'm not digging, I was not very speedy with that. We'll see how this goes. I'm not sure. I lost my. I'm 
going to want to pull some of this up. <laughs> this is just thinking, thinking in the moment. Let's create some more texture. Because so I'm going to want to do this a little bit of white, I think, instead of it being all dark. You got to go with your gut instinct. That was an instinctive move, 100%. Um, and I'm wanting more texture. So I'm just kind of looking for things that I can pull up, pull up a little bit of interest here. Some of that paint that's going to leave some. Of the, oh, perfect. That's what I needed to do. That's actually what I needed to do was just really pull up a little bit here, a little bit here and there. And I'm trying not to get in between because I'm very cognizant of where those are. But that now, see, that's now very interesting texture. It's got very cool colors underneath it, and it's leaving that pattern behind. So I've got some interesting stuff. You know what this really needs is it needs a little bit of scripty stuff, but I don't really know where my stencil is. Um, I didn't, it looks like I didn't grab my script stencil. So let's add something else that I can add with black um, for a little contrast here. Something that's not going to be too in your face. So I'm going to take some of this. It's got lots, lots of small little dots. And because I'm going to add a really big contrasting color, I'm going to just need just a little tiny bit of it. And I'm going to actually stencil it through. So I'm going to go on to the orange here because then we'll be able to build together off that um, for another little teeny tiny print. I love these little prints. You can make some of the coolest stuff with that. And we're just going to kind of put that through here for it to be perfect and you can see how it just adds that little tiny I've got a lot of really cool stuff going on there but it adds that little tiny bit of something um, when you need contrast right how does that look right from the back side I can't even really tell what it is yet um, yeah I'm liking that that's good let's add just a hair little tiny patterning here perfect Okay. Ideally, this would have been great if it was the underneath part and I completely smudged it there. Look at that. How did I do that? That's unusual. No. The only way to fix that is to remove it, right? That's what my fingers are for. And now it becomes more grungy, right? Or just able to just lift that off. So it's like it never happened, which is great. Love that. Yeah, the magenta color is quinacridone magenta. I don't care what kind of magenta. I am not a pink person, but quinacridone magenta, and I, it, it never fails. I don't really know what it, different brands I use. I love them all. Um, Reeves, if you're in Europe, uh, Reeves is very popular. You can find that over there. Um, Golden makes great quinacridone magenta. Liquitex Basics, this is beautiful, um, as well as the abstract that I use. Um, by Senlier. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, oh, this is Carmine Red, but they have a magenta too that I, I use a lot. A lot of different great ones. So, oh, really loving this. Okay. It'll be interesting to see um, because I have that blue and that green underneath, which aren't really the colors that kind of go with this, but hey, you never know, right? Okay, let's dry that super quick. And well, actually, before I do that, let's uh, let's just remove some stuff from here before this becomes like a big black blob. And the cool part about that, just putting this down here like this, is now I can take something like this, where I was just kind of building some of this stuff, and just add that little tiny bit of something where it just grunges it up a little bit. See? And now it's just adding that little tiny bit. This was that short that I posted today. Adding little tiny bits to your pieces. Um, don't be afraid to do that because it sometimes is just what it needs. Okay, perfect. And I want to actually pull a lot of that away. 
So I'm just going to do that here because it's just a little too perfect. And this will be like a little tiny thing that will pull up also. This has a little too much stuff on it, but we'll pull that up. This still is wet because it was a lot of paint. So I'm going to let that dry. And let's go ahead and add a white layer to this. And go ahead and take a pull. Why not, right? All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these at the same time, even though that's kind of like a weird straight line. And I think with that one, let's add a little bit of iron oxide. This is like a super, super um, liquid fluid acrylic, and you have to work quickly when you're using these. Um, this is like an iron oxide, so iron oxide yellow, yellow oxide. Um, a lot of black on here but it dries pretty quick but it's usually pretty pretty opaque uh, I mean pretty translucent usually so let's just go ahead and pull that that's great and I need to wear out the white let's go ahead and do that this is gonna be oh this is gonna be really pretty I'm gonna have to find a piece of rice paper for this because this is this is gonna be gorgeous. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to here. I need to pull a little bit of paint on that, and I want to bring this closer and use tissue for this one. So let's get those out of the way, and then I need another piece of rice paper for this. This actually doesn't have enough white. I can tell it's too dry right here, which means it's wet here and too dry here. I didn't get enough of the paint to the side. So I'm gonna actually add a little tiny bit more. Oh, it wasn't a little tiny bit, that was a lot. Okay, so let's now add more. Thankfully it's white as white. So, you know, it's gonna work. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I was afraid that I did that too short. I did it just right. Excellent. Okay, I just wanna get a good bond here because this is really cool. I, I can already tell that I'm gonna like this. Wow, I got a lot of different pieces. Not at all anything that I expected to get today. I was going for solid colors and I didn't do any of that. I got one solid color print, but it was rainbow, so that doesn't really count. Okay, let's let that dry and then pull that all up. And you can see even with like these bits and bobs, there's like, these are like little gems because what you can end up doing, and you can see that iron oxide did not, iron yellow or oxide yellow, yellow oxide did not really blend with the orange. It's kind of very grungy-ish. However, here's where this will work really well. Like right now I'm collaging trees, okay, to make a nature scene. I'm very inspired by my backyard sitting on my patio in the evening. Look at all this really amazing stuff that we created today. I love it. It looks like nothing, but I guarantee you once you start seeing it like in the art journals and on paintings and things, you're going to be like, wow, I cannot even believe those little tiny bits of nothing is what you need. Um, this will work really well as a tree trunk, the colors. Um, so I need little bits and pieces like this. I even sometimes just need like a little bit of texture of something. Um, so I can actually use this kind of stuff. This is the stuff that I'm actually lacking because I have that tendency to see pattern and then I just want to make the big print. And so I need lots of little pieces that I can rip up where it doesn't have to be the whole thing. So this one, although I don't really feel like this is ready. I'm going to pull it anyway. Oh, look at how cute this is. Oh, and I love the little white flowers. That was a total just happy little thing that we did. It was not intended. I wasn't planning on doing it. 
Wow, that actually came in really cute. So this is like a cleanup plate. I use this as my palette when I'm painting and I'm doing other things. I put my paint down. Is this like what? what? Um, so you can see here, I'm just going to like see if I can get any paint down. And then I end up picking it up. I brayer it out. And then whatever's left, you can see that I had like little spots where I had like my, my deep magenta. And then I had some white and I blended it into a lighter pink. I had a couple different tones of yellow. And um, you can see the gold here behind it is really pretty because it's metallic. I know you can't see the metallic. But then we have this kind of like olive green and the Prussian blue, which are not anything that you would ever blend with like the pink but yet somehow it kind of works because when you cut this to like here, it's that little tiny bit of pop, right? So you cut this flower here and they're like these little tiny strips of things that you can do. You can make a tag or you can put it on a card or you can put it in an art journal. There's so much that you can do. Yeah, Cricut, the gold. Yeah, that's like the hero of tonight, right? There's the lesson. Now this one actually, dried a lot faster than I expected. Feels like it's dry. So we'll see. It's tissue paper. So you never know. We haven't had much luck with that today. Although I've been, I've been using tissue paper all week and it's been great. But of course, live is a whole nother ball game. Well, look at that. Oh, I'm loving that. Okay. Some of it's staying behind, but that's okay. It's just, we're just paying it forward. Oh, look at this texture. This is really cool. Okay. I'm liking this. Again, this is going to go really well with my other piece, um, you know, when I start to tear it up. And so what I end up doing, I'll just, I'll just do it and it'll probably freak you all out, but that's okay. So I end up just like needing like a little something. And so I end up just like tearing it. And then I end up adding this little bit in. And those are the pieces that I'm missing. That's what I was really hoping to get today. So what's really cool is we've got that paid forward um, for the next time. And now we're gonna take this one. I can feel like it's still a little cold, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? We have that other big one. Let's do that one first. I know you're dying to see this one. All right, here we go. That was another one. Wow, that was cool. The face? What face? I didn't see a face. What face? <laughs> I didn't see a face. <laughs> I'm going to have to look back at the chat now later. <laughs> All right. Oh, my desk is a wreck. I got paint everywhere. That's a good problem to have. Good problem to have. All right. Okay, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't even remember what we have on the other side here. <gasps> it's all coming up. Hey, see, leaving it to the side was great. Oh, look at that black is providing the perfect contrast. Okay, let me make sure that this is all in frame for you all. Loving this. This is great. I'm just putting the fan up here. Hang on. So, oh, look at the white. Okay, see, here's what I'm talking about with contrast, that black and that white, that's what you need, right? All right, I'm reading the German one. I can't see it. I'm going to have to look at that. <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at how cool that is. And we still have that other one still. Oh, the gold is so pretty. So pretty. Okay. I'm not seeing it. Right here. Is that what you guys are talking about? I'm not sure. I don't see it. <laughs> I'm going to look at it later. It's hard to read the chat, do this and do that all at once. Okay, this is really cool because this is like so unexpected. I feel like it's kind of Miami Beach-ish a little bit, 
right? I don't expect, these are not colors that I gravitate towards, but you know what I really love about this is right here. Look at this, having that, this is magenta and blue coming together um, to create that kind of purple sitting on top of that. These are not colors that you would expect with that little bit of black. And then you have this beautiful pattern, kind of like that dainty kind of look coming out here um, with this beautiful, beautiful stencil. And then I'm really loving the stark contrast because of course these are like two different things, right? You can't, together it's too much, right? But if you look at this by itself, love this little bit here. And then look at all this interest in here. See, for me, like something torn like this onto a piece of artwork would be really, really pretty. And I love all the texture that we've created. Uh, yeah, this is so cool. So cool. I'm digging this a lot. All right. So we got one more still. Those are a lot of really great pulls. Love this. Okay. Hoping this one, hoping this one is dry enough. Let me just give it one last. Okay. I need to read this text. <laughs> okay. Under the dandelion. I think I'm going to have to watch the replay to kind of see what you guys are seeing. Because for some reason, I'm not seeing it. Really loving this. So I'd love to know um, kind of like what you guys have been working on. What have you, have you been painting? Have you been art journaling? Making cards? Printing? Oh, this is definitely feeling like it's getting there. Okay, this is good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hi, Grace. Ooh. I just really want to say thank you to everybody who has been here and just been hanging out and chatting. And even if you're... <gasps> Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Even if you've just been lurking and uh, haven't really been able to jump in the chat, if you're having dinner or breakfast or <laughs> wherever you are in the world, I want that to come up. So let me try it from this side so that I can grab that all. We'll just keep, we'll just keep going. Some of it's going to stay behind. Some of it's going to stay behind on the sides. Sometimes I like to try to help it, but not wanting to give up on the sides. Let me do this just to make sure that it pulls up. Because sometimes what I what happens is when you pay a lot forward, build up, and it's harder and harder to pull that up. So sometimes by just gently um, lifting it up on the edges, like you saw I did right there, um, that allows it to kind of come up. Especially if you know that the print is dry. This is gorgeous. I love this. It's so grungy and cool. Oh, I had to actually totally lean back. It was a lot of tension between the plate. Look at how cool this is. And we've got this really cool pattern here. I'm loving the black on here. The thing that's really interesting with the rice paper is it has a very matte look to it versus like the wax paper where you see like everything is kind of shiny. Um, so it's very matte looking, which is interesting. Um, I'm loving this. I almost kind of feel like this is a heart right here, right? Doesn't that look like that? This is beautiful. I love how this came together. And you know what's so interesting is the gold just be kind of becomes absorbed and it, be, it blends into it a little bit and it creates this different kind of hue. Um, I'm really, really intrigued by this. And I love the layered up blue and green on top of it because it's unexpected. And then you've got all this interesting pattern. So again, not gonna use this as a whole, although there is some cool stuff going on here that I could probably turn like a cup, a little bit of this into like a coaster and it would be very interesting. Um, yeah, this would be like something where I'll definitely use this in art. Um, so this is this was a big win, this one, this was a big, this was a big win. This is just so cool. I'm digging this. Um, this was unexpected and unplanned, really. So I love that. I love this little guy. This is this all this I'll probably use up this week. 
Um, I'm really loving this, believe it or not. This it was probably one of my favorites of the evening. And I love little bits like this. I think I'm going to create more and more of that. That was pulled through the remnants of the sequins. And then this was just, oh, love this one. This was great. Um, this one didn't really turn into anything. I'll just layer more and more on that one. And that's just the starter piece. Love this as a background. So these kinds of pieces, sometimes I need things that are just really, really distressed, or I'll end up layering on top of that for another one. Um, this was the original print, uh, that one that pulled up where we left all that other stuff behind. That was really amazing. And then I love this print. And then I pulled and put a little bit more on top of it. I loved it actually on its own. I probably should have left it at its own. But now I'll probably layer more and more because I really love this going on. And the gold on top of it, that was a little unexpected for me. Um, so I'm really loving that. And let's see here. This didn't really have anything. So I'll layer more onto that. Everything kind of fell over. Oh. Of course, how could I forget? Our unexpected rainbow. And uh, this was actually a really cool one. I, I, I actually kind of like it like this. This is kind of cool. I'm not, I'll probably put this into a journal too. And that would be actually interesting just like that. Uh, would make a cool card background, galaxy, so many fun things. This is just the beginning of a lot more. So I'm gonna put a, pop a playlist right here um, with some more gel printing fun for those of you that are watching the replay. And thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I hope you all have a pleasant and happy uh, weekend. A lot of art. Now it's time for you to get creating, all right? So that's my little challenge to you. Go explore your world, find the textures that you have around your environment, and then sit down and bring it to life, okay? Bye, everybody. Till next time. Thank you for joining me.